What's the biggest problem in building a smart home? I'll tell you. It's the fear of missing out. And if you're thinking of building one, then I'm going to show you the blueprint that I used to build mine right here behind me. And trust me, you can do it too. Hello and welcome to my channel. And as part of my smart home journey series, I've already shown you the home we built in Brazil, along with all the sustainability features we've added to it. If you haven't watched those videos, I definitely recommend checking them out. So today I'm excited to walk you through the blueprint I personally used to plan and build my DIY smart home from the ground up. The good news is that I use my own money to build it. So if you're thinking about turning your home into a smart home, which is all about making your life easier, safer, and maybe a bit cooler to even show off, then stick with me because there's quite a bit to consider. So before we dive in too deep, let's talk about some of the challenges you might face when entering the world of smart home technology. Now, like many of us, I was overwhelmed by the sheer number of devices and brands out there. It gets even more complicated with all the digital marketing, the protocols, and then wondering if those devices are even available in your region. Take me for example who lives in South America. I mean there's a lot of anxiety thinking, is this a good idea? Will I regret building a smart home? And then of course the fear of missing out on the latest and greatest gadgets. I mean, lots of questions start piling up in the head. Now, don't worry, you're not alone. Many people, including myself, face these roadblocks. But with the right information, you can easily navigate through the fear of missing out. So to address the hurdles that I just mentioned, Let's first level the playing field and grade ourselves. Are you a noob, which is a person who is totally inexperienced with tech and needs 100% tech support? However, you can, with some guidance, scan a QR code, pair a smart home device, and do everything within an app like the Apple Home app. And you basically don't have a lot of spare time with you. Or are you tech savvy, which is a person with basic tech experience and needs some kind of tech support. However, you can do a lot more than a noob can do. You can also set up smart home systems following online tutorials, build basic automations, and you have some time to spare with your smart home setup. Or are you a tinkerer, which is a person who literally enjoys building, fixing, experimenting, and has a broad knowledge with technology. However, you can do a lot more than a noob and or a tech savvy can do. You can build local control systems over the smart home. You aim to unify all of your smart home devices under one roof. And lastly, you have all of the time in the world. So once you know where you fit and who you are, you essentially have two options when it comes to tackling the challenges of building a smart home. Option one, you hire a service provider to take care of everything, letting them decide what's best for your home. This can be a pricey solution as you're outsourcing the entire home setup and management. In this case, you get what you pay for. Option two, you take on the responsibility of building and managing your smart home yourself. Now, this might involve outsourcing some of the physical work, but you keep control over the management and integration of everything into the smart home ecosystem of your choice. So I went ahead with option two, which is obvious. And to get started, I established three key rules when building my smart home. Rule number one, no two homes are the same. And likewise, no two smart homes are the same. Rule number two, every household has different needs and therefore every smart home will have different requirements. Rule number three, Lastly, setting clear goals is crucial to getting it right. Now, once I had these rules in place, I then focused on my specific goals. One app for everything. I wanted a smart home experience where I could control everything using just one app. I didn't want the hassle of switching between apps just to turn on the light, check the cameras, or even create automations. Two, full local control. Privacy is a big deal for me. So I wanted all my devices to be controlled locally along with my data as well. Even if the internet went down, I knew I could still control everything. Three, family friendly setup. It wasn't just about me. The whole family needed to be on board. Their input, including my kids, 
was crucial to making this work. It was not just getting the wife approval, but it was always a family approval. Four, and finally, budget-friendly approach. With the world of IoT constantly evolving, I wanted to future-proof my smart home while keeping costs under control. I needed to balance staying within budget while ensuring there was room for upgrades in the future. And after setting my goals, the next step was to streamline the process of gathering the smart home requirements. Now, to make this easier, I used a Kaizen tool, which comes from the manufacturing industry where I worked as a project manager for more than 10 years. If you're unfamiliar with Kaizen, it means continuous improvement and focuses on making small, regular changes to improve efficiency, reduce waste, and enhance quality over time. Now, the specific Kaizen tool I used is called 3P to map out my smart home blueprint. They are people. Here, I focus on the needs and behaviors of the people living in this home to ensure the setup was family friendly. Platforms. Here I considered the technology platforms and systems that would integrate all my devices to meet my goals of using one app for everything and having full local control. Products. Here I selected the brands, devices and hardware that would bring the smart home to life while keeping it budget friendly. So now let's go ahead and fill up these three buckets to put a full circle to meet my goals. Now, when it came to people, the answer was simple, my family. It was just the four of us with occasional guests visiting our home. My family's feedback helped me decide what devices to include and how it would make it easy for everyone to use. Now, when it came to platforms, for a single app experience, the decision was straightforward since we are an Apple household. We use Apple products for work, entertainment like the Apple TV and the HomePod minis. So the obvious choice for managing our smart home was through the Apple Home app. However, to make a home truly smart, we needed a smart home hub. And guess what? We were already using the Apple TV and the HomePod minis, which act as a smart home hub. Now you may ask, what is a smart home hub? Well, this is how I explained it to my kids. A smart home hub is like a brain of a smart home. It helps all your smart devices to talk to each other and work together. Imagine you have a toy robot, a remote control car, and a talking doll but they all need to be controlled separately. So a smart home hub essentially brings them all together so you can control everything from one place like a magic remote. So instead of turning off the lights or locking the door one by one, the hub can make them all work automatically like when you leave the house or go to bed. So before searching devices, I first focused on setting up a strong Wi-Fi local network that could also double down as a security system. I chose the Unify network because it follows Apple's philosophy of seamless integration between hardware and software, which was a clear winner. And it also offered local control and access to all of the camera footage, which was a top priority for me. Now, I've already made a video on my Unify Protect setup, and I also have a video coming soon on the networking side of things. Now, to integrate the third party devices into Apple Home app, I used HomeBridge, which allowed me to bring non native Apple devices. For managing smart devices, I chose the Zigbee protocol, which creates a self healing local network doesn't rely on the cloud. And most importantly, I was able to access lots of wide label products and I use these two websites to purchase budget friendly brands. I also plan to add Home Assistant in the future for even more flexibility. Now, by using these integrations and plugins, I was able to expose all of the devices into the Apple Home app, achieving that singular local control experience and solid self-healing network coverage across my home. Well, with whatever platform you choose to work with, your top priority is to always look for devices that work with it natively. This way you are assured it works out of the box 
as well as most cases, you will have a hassle-free setup. If they don't work, don't worry. There are open source platforms to get them to work to your choice of platform. Now, when it came to choosing products, the process was straightforward after discussing with my family. However, before we built our home, we were renting an apartment where I had already set up a few smart devices like a smart lampshade, a smart switch, nano leaf panels and a blind as well. Now my family got used to the convenience of automation like lights turning on at a specific time and saw the value of having a smart home. We then discussed what devices we needed for our new home and we had a clear list starting with smart switches. We chose Zigbee based smart switches to control groups of regular dumb lights throughout the house. So all our bedrooms and most other rooms have smart switches. These switches also needed to be controlled manually. Two, smart lights. In areas like the living room and outdoor spaces, we added smart lights that can be programmed into scenes, change colors, and adapt based on the environment and time. Three, blinds. We opted for smart blinds to reduce the cost of curtain material and add convenience and also can be controlled using a remote. 4. Air conditioners. In South America, it's expensive and not so common to have an HVAC system. However, we went with smart split air conditioners. 5. Security. Since we opted for the Unify that powers the network, it made clear sense to go with their security cameras and doorbell, all integrated into one system for a seamless experience. 6. Entertainment. We really needed a top-notch sound and viewing experience that included Dolby Atmos, a giant TV, as well as immersive lighting because we really love our popcorn nights. 7. Battery-powered devices. Last but not the least, we would use buttons for scenes and sensors to control various aspects of the house. With these devices, you can add them to automation, which we will talk in a second. However, Living in South America, access to smart devices was challenging, expensive, and limited. Getting these products was always going to be a bit of a challenge. Most of our smart devices are purchased from AliExpress, and while we deal with taxes, many of the white label products work perfectly. Using the platforms I mentioned earlier, I was able to integrate all of these devices into the Apple Home app. Now, after setting up the smart devices and making them accessible in the Apple Home app, the next step was automations. This is where the real smart part of your home comes to life. Without automations, you just have smart devices that work through touch, voice, or a physical button, but they don't really interact with the other devices or perform tasks automatically based on time, location, or even on a condition. With my Apple TV and HomePod minis acting as the brains of the smart home, I can now teach the system to execute actions on its own. This is what truly makes your home smart. If you remember the concept of Kaizen, making small continuous improvements, that's the iterative approach I'm taking with my automations. Right now, we have basic automations like leaving home, arriving home, and the good night scene. Since we've been in this house for almost seven months, we are still adjusting and haven't fully defined our routines yet. I've set up some sensors with basic automations, but it's important to note that a smart home doesn't need to be perfect right away. It's a gradual process that evolves as you and your family live in it. And as a smart home owner, I observe how we use the house and also have family discussions on the weekends to see what automations would make sense and bring value to all. It truly needs to be an open communication. You really don't want to force automations because at the end of the day, it should feel natural and adapt to your lifestyle over time. So that's my smart home blueprint from getting the goals to using the three P method and to first get everything into that one app. If you're planning your smart home, take your time, set your goals, and remember, you're building this for you and your family. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more updates on our smart home journey and other exciting DIY smart home projects. Until the next time, my friends, cheers and happy automation.